Hello, watch enthusiasts. Now, those who watch this channel regularly will know that I, I do like a good high-value high product in terms of watches, and especially affordable options which offer a, a great deal to a consumer. And so, uh, today I'm reviewing this main Hudson, which is a rather interesting and very new dive watch to the market, which offers a Swiss movement and, and a very impressive build of case and, uh, and design for a remarkably low, under £500 price tag. And whilst there are areas where I think this watch does fall short, I think for this price it's, it's an impressive package and one which I'm very keen to speak about here on the channel because I do think it's important to support good products and ones which, uh, which offer something new and something very novel to the market. As always, I would like to give my statement with regards to, uh, to the fact that I'm not being paid to produce this review. And I feel this is an important thing to, uh, to say because I don't own this watch, it's been lent to me for the purpose of this review and I'm not being paid to say anything positive about it, so um, I would like to put that out there, because I think it's an important element to, to, uh, to state these things, just so that the viewer knows exactly what, uh, what sort of background I'm coming from with this review, and so it's very clear that, um, that there's no bias involved with regards to speaking about this model. I really am speaking about it because I think the product is interesting, and I was offered the opportunity to review it. Now, before I speak about the watch itself, I would like to speak about the brand that's created it. And Main, meaning Moon in, uh, in Dutch, was founded by two Dutchmen who, uh, who were interested in, in the history of New York, and also the fact that, uh, that a great deal of its, its landmarks are named after Dutch words due to, uh, due to a Dutch involvement there. And so it's an interesting origin to come from, and uh, their models are inspired in name and also in some forms by New York as a city. And in this case, Hudson is of course taken from the river and is of course appropriate for a dive watch of this sort, and I think sets the tone for this watch as something a little bit alternative and something a bit different to what you might normally expect at this sort of, uh, this sort of uh, segment of dive watch in the market. And this watch takes, of course, a very, a very classical inspiration and does come in two variants where sizing is concerned and more in terms of colours, but I'll speak about those when I speak about the dial and the bezel. Because the watch, in terms of dimensions, in this case, is 38mm from side to side, it's 46mm from lug to lug, and 10.5mm thick from the back of the case back to the top of the domed sapphire crystal. There is also another version which comes in at 42mm from side to side, 505 from lug to lug, and, and then grows to 12mm thick as opposed to 105 And so this, this is an interesting alternative to the smaller sizes which are becoming more popular, um, as if you do want a larger watch for a larger wrist, they do provide an identical watch but in that larger size, which I think is a nice touch, the fact that you're able to choose your size with the very very traditional idea of having a mid-size and a full-size dive watch. Now, where the design for this, this watch is concerned, I'll start with the case, which I feel is important to really understanding the vintage style to this watch, but also the fact that it doesn't feel overly so and can be seen as a very contemporary piece too. Because, especially in this 38mm size, it's difficult to not draw parallels with something like a 1960s Rolex Submariner, but this watch does still have some very key differences, and so I'll talk you through the case in a general sense, first of all. So in terms of the design, it has these brushed and lengthways um, brushed elements on the top of the lugs, which are very finely done, and I'm pleased to say that the quality of this brushing is continued on the bracelet, because often the bracelet is, is finished to a lower degree than the case, but not so in, here, in this, uh, this scenario. Then on the sides of the case, one has these very high-polished sides, with bevels running down their edge, which helps to break up the shape of the watch and also creates a somewhat dressy form as a result of the amount of reflections coming off the case. And whilst these aren't the sharpest bevels I've ever seen, they work very well to allow the case to take on a more classic, more worn sort of form, but without sacrificing any of the quality of the finishing, which is very apparent on the sides of the case. Of course, you have a uh, unidirectional rotating bezel, which I'll speak about in more detail in a moment. But then if one speaks about the crown, it's been produced in this very large size um, on the side of the case, and as you can see is wider than the mid-case of the watch, thus meaning that it's, it's, it's uh, quite easy to grip with those large knurlings and unscrew, because this does have a screw-down crown. The crown is also signed with, uh, with uh, the, the M for main, and it's a deep engraving as well, which matches the, um, the, the text on the dial, which I think is again a, a good touch. They've kept this consistent. Then, with regards to the crown, it's, it's unguarded, as you can see, and due to its large size, it does protrude quite a bit from the side of the case, though I haven't found that it digs into the wrist, because it's relatively flat in, uh, in profile, while still being large in, uh, in diameter, which are, which are an, a nice characteristics to see. And, and certainly it does match the bezel as well, in terms of the, uh, the knurlings on its edge, which is also important, bearing in mind the fact that watches such as the, the Tudor Black Bay Chronograph um, were, uh, were complained about as a result of having very different finishes on different crowns and elements, 
where here they've kept it very, very much consistent. Now, looking at the front of the watch, the most immediately noticeable thing is the bezel. And the bezel is a nice balance of different influences, because as you can see, it has this, um, this full graduation from zero uh, onwards all around the, the circle of its, uh, its timing. However, it does have graduations which are slightly larger in the first 15 minutes, as per the standard. And like a Rolex Sea Dweller, for example, it does have smaller graduations than running around the rest. And again, there is a certain Rolex element to this, because it does use a very similar form of font, as well as using that, uh, that, that red pip at 12 o'clock, which is, of course, uh, a key, uh, key element of 60s Submariners. However, it's much finer than those, and feels much more like an Oris Diver 65 bezel, as a result of its, its shape, but also how fine the insert actually is. And in terms of operation, it's very, very clean and smooth. As you can see, it pops between, between marks, and there is backplay. However, once it's set, it doesn't move anymore, so it's very much backplay between slots when it's coming off the end of the click spring, and then slotting into place. So I wouldn't say it's play in terms of actual movement in the bezel, but rather play when you're setting it. And so it rotates very easily um, with that, that swing back, as you can see, once it slots in, with 120 clicks, thus uh, one uh, for every, every half minute. And so that's able to be set very easily. Although I will say that one criticism I have of this is that the bezel uh, knurlings um, are at first, when coming from a watch with much, uh, a much more aggressive knurling, is at first a bit difficult to use, especially with the large crown. If you have it on the wrist, it can be difficult to get a grip on this side of the case, whilst it's much easier from top and, and bottom. And so that is something to bear in mind. That it's not the most ergonomic bezel in the world, but does work very well. Also one feature of the bezel is that it doesn't have a luminous pip at 12 o'clock. And this is a bit of a concern with, uh, with this piece in terms of, um, um, of being able to use this watch more, more effectively at night. And whilst I will say that not all dive watches have pips at 12 o'clock on the bezel, and this doesn't bother me too much on some other options, I think it's a missed opportunity on this piece, because it would have worked very well with the general aesthetic of the watch, and made it just that little bit more usable. And on the black versions, you get this, this, this pinky-red sort of coloration to that pip, which matches the elements on the hands and dial, and I'll speak about that a bit later on when I speak directly about those. And on the blue version of this watch, which is also available, which is more of a midnight blue, you don't get those red elements, you simply have silver and white, which personally I find more aesthetically pleasing. Sitting atop the watch is this domed sapphire crystal, and as you can see there is an anti-reflective coating to it, although I must say, as a result of the fact this watch isn't too expensive, I don't expect the grade to be particularly high, and if you're used to the anti-reflective coatings on, say, Omegas, this won't, won't perform to that sort of level, um, or even a watch from Zinn, for example, will have a much uh, superior level of anti-reflective coating. But it does still have a certain effect, and I think does help to make the watch more legible at extreme angles and under direct sunshine. One should also note that it does have this sort of box, box shape to it, so one has this steep raising on the edge and then a subtle dome over the top. And whilst I think this looks great in terms of the, the design of it, and I think works wonderfully with the bezel to create a really beautiful looking watch, I think it doesn't help with the legibility of the dial, um, as I'll try and explain when I speak about that directly. Because the dial on this watch is sandblasted, as you can see, and has this matted effect, which gives this quite fine matted gritted effect, which isn't quite what you'd expect from, uh, from a, a normal matte dial, but gives a nice balance of iridescence um, with that soft and um, very legible tone. Of course, it does also feature these applied indices, which are filled with C3 superluminova, and have this, um, this metal rim around them, which, whilst not, uh, not the most detailed as a result of not having, um, not having very flat edges, um, it is very consistent, and it seems to be very well made. This matches the hands as well, which also have these, um, these, these polished metal elements, and especially one can see on the, the hours and the minutes, they have these, these, uh, these beveled edges, which come off the side of the hands and broaden them somewhat, to create much more visual interest to them, as opposed to simply having stick-shaped hands. Now, the, the, the dial is also available in blue, in that midnight blue form, and with the black model, one does have a choice of chapter rings, as you can see, this model has this, uh, this black chapter ring with graduations running around its edge, with 60 in that pinky red colour, in addition to 30 matching it with 15 and 45. However, one difficulty I've found with this, uh, this black version is that the, the edge of the bezel, um, or rather the edge of the, the chapter ring and the crystal, conflict with each other. And what this means is that if you're looking at it anything other than a completely dead straight angle, the chapter ring disappears entirely into that, uh, that bevel in the crystal, and so you're not able to see it at all, which I think is a shame and doesn't help the watch's legibility. Um, and I, I do wonder whether this would be different with the version with the white chapter ring, 
which, uh, which is also an option for the black dialed version. And then if you get the blue version, you automatically get the white, so I think that's, uh, that's very much a given that it will be more legible. One of the details is that the hands have this, uh, this, this uh, C3 superluminova down their centre, and this means that you do have significant legibility at night, although I feel this is impeded somewhat by the use of that pinky-red colour on the hands as well. Because where you can see it on that pip on the seconds, and also in that square on the hours, it isn't luminous. And so this creates a difficulty when, when trying to read the watch at night, because it simply removes the amount of loom available, and also removes the very important um, demonstration of whether the watch is running or not, which is seen on the second hand, where one should have a luminous pip, which I think is a shame and something which, which shouldn't have been overlooked when designing this piece. And whilst I may not sing the praises of the dial of this watch, one element which I really am in favour of, in addition to the case and the general design of the watch, is the choice of movement. Because normally under £500 you wouldn't expect to get an ETA2824. However, in addition to that, you really wouldn't expect to get regulation and careful care, and that's exactly what they've been able to provide with this watch. Now as you can see, there is an exhibition case back on this watch, which means it only has 100 metre water resistance, which is slightly low, um, to be perfectly honest, for a dive watch, though you can get a closed case back, but that's a bit of a niggle I have with this watch, which I'll explain later on. Because the movement in this watch is, as you can see, undecorated, but does have a, a main rotor, and is an ETA2824 as opposed to a Slita or an STP movement. Um, just to, to clarify that, not that there's any particular difference in quality. But it's the élaboré grade as well, so it's slightly higher grade than the normal base movement, um, and also in addition to that, um, it has been regulated in Switzerland. So this watch has been regulated in Bienne, uh, to four positions, which is certainly beyond what you would ever expect for £500, especially when they're already paying for an ETA2824 for this watch, which, again, is a significant investment by comparison to a Seiko movement, for example, which, whilst may may offer um, decent uh, accuracy when uh, when provided um, with regulation, I think that a lot of people would, uh, would like to have a Swiss ETA2824 in their watch, and so this does provide. And whilst it isn't decorated, I do think the regulation is, is a, worthy, um, a worthy offset, and this watch is available also with a 200 meter watch resistance. However, they sell the case back separately. So the reason why this has a 100 meter watch resistance is because it has an exhibition case back. However, if you buy the watch um, with a, um, an exhibition case back, as well as buying a solid case back for these watches, you'll pay an extra 29 euros, but Main won't install it. So at the present time, you have to have it installed by someone else, which I think is a shame. and is, uh, I think, reflects badly of the way they're going about the, uh, the, 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 the production of this watch, because it would be nice to be able to specify that upon purchase. So I think that is a shame, but certainly even with a 100 meter watch resistance, it's a perfectly reasonable watch to have, bearing in mind the fact that due to that non-luminous second hand and the non-luminous bezel, it's not theoretically a scuba diving watch, and so in that regard, really, it's more of a casual dive watch to be used by the sea, for example, or whilst snorkeling. Of course, one important element to the enjoyment of this watch is the bracelet. And as you can see, the bracelet is solid, so it's a solid bracelet which isn't, isn't uh, a case of folded links, but these are solid steel. It has this uh, solid end link as well, which means that you don't get the, the play in a, a loose end link, and also allows you to have a, a much more secure build. And as, as, I, as I said, the finishing is very good and matches the case uh, very effectively. And you have this, this five-link design where you actually have these separate pieces on the centre link, which means that you have this more complex look. But also, it is fully articulated, so as you can see, each link is, is, is not connected to the next, so the bracelet actually moves completely fluidly, as opposed to having solid three-link pieces, which slot together. And so this means the watch wears in a more comfortable way on the wrist, and because it has these gaps, which have been carefully left between the links, it doesn't catch or pull hairs either, which is, is appreciated. Then, with regards to the adjustment, it does have push pins, as opposed to having um, screws, which I think is a shame. I think it would have been nice to see screws as opposed to push pins on this bracelet, because it's not a bracelet where the bracelet itself is very narrow or thin, and so pins would be would be a more secure or, or more fine option. So it would have been nice to see screws, although it, it's by no means a defining problem with this watch. Then the clasp is well modelled to match that style of, um, of bracelet, and I'm pleased to see a solid milled um, elbow joint instead of something folded, and it pops together in a very traditional way like that and then with this uh, security clip over the top with main engraved into it. And with regards to its build, it is uh, somewhat antiquated in terms of it, it, what it offers. Um, it doesn't offer some of the finesse and details of more modern uh, sort of clasp, and it would have been nice to see triggers, as opposed to having to catch your nail underneath this and pull it up. But it's, it's by no means tinny, and certainly holds together extremely well whilst providing you with this micro-adjustment, um, which, which is helpful to sizing the bracelet. 
though perhaps it's not what you would uh, would expect with uh, with comparison to the, the rest of the case, which I think is um, is finished with a great deal more care. For example, that bezel, which is really a wonderful thing to operate, um, is very very different to the clasp setup. Although it's by no means a deal breaker, especially for this price. Now at this point in the video, I think it's worth speaking about the watch on the wrist because my wrist is seven inches in um, in, in circumference, and so is 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 really a, a sort of a, an average sort of size. Um, for a man's wrist. And this, and I can only speak for the 38mm version, fits very, very well. As you can see, that 46mm lug to lug length means that it sits far from the, the fringes of the wrist and thus doesn't, doesn't overextend, which I think would be a shame and would make the watch a lot less elegant than it is. And I think, especially bearing in mind the fact the watch has a fine bezel, an unguarded crown, and a relatively uh, sort of uh, simple dial which isn't conceived for absolute tool functionality, it's nice to see the watch in a slightly smaller size just to be a bit more comfortable in a lot of cases, and especially with that 10.5mm thickness, it works very, very well on the wrist, and, and I must say is a pleasure to wear, because it does uh, does hold to the wrist very, very well. Now, I don't know if the 42mm version would be too much for my wrist, um, bearing in mind that I have worn much larger pieces, but even so, I think the, the shorter lug-to-lug -lug length in, in particular means this watch is very, very comfortable to wear. Now, here's the watch in the dark, and as you can see, the loom is is significant on the dial, but again, is is somewhat minimal in terms of what I think could have been the case if there wasn't that uh, that block in the middle of the hour hand. And you will note, as is very much the case when you look at this watch um, without uh, without looking at it through a through a camera, the the dial, as a result of having quite deep fills on those applied uh, applied indices, the dial is much more bright than the hands. Um, and because it's simply a strip of loom along the the length of the hands, the hands quite quickly fade. And this watch will give you four or five hours of uh, of loom if you're if you're lucky, but I must say more often if it's been under the, under a cuff or if it's been worn without being in direct sunshine, it'll last maybe three hours um, at a legible sort of level. And I feel it would have been nice to see a much brighter application of loom, which is normally the case from brands around this price range. And I think chief amongst these problems is the fact the loom has been painted onto the hands as opposed to being filled, which is how a normal conventional hand is uh, is loomed. And so whilst the loom is, is underwhelming on this watch, it is sufficient for the purpose of this watch, which, it, which it's trying to achieve, which is to be a watch which is, uh, which is suitable to be worn as sort of a dress diver, as opposed to something which is designed to be used professionally. So I think the choice of whether this loom is appropriate for you or not is, is very much a personal choice, but as you can see, in, in, with the, the camera's exposure, it's already becoming hard to see the hands, although admittedly in real life, and I will stress this, it's not nearly this significant a change. Um, but you can see that the loom isn't quite uh, quite as bright as you might hope. And so in conclusion, I think this watch is undoubtedly not completely perfect. For example, the hands on this black version, I don't care for the red. I would prefer, for example, the way they've done the blue version, which doesn't have these details. Similarly, it would be nice to see loom on the bezel, but again, it's not a necessity in the case of this timepiece. But overall, I feel the build of this watch is exceptional for the price of €499 Euros it costs. And again, it would be nice to have the option from this particular moment to have that closed case back installed if you want it. But I think the current package with 100 metre water resistance, the very, very well well machined and, and well engineered bezel, the nicely regulated and Swiss regulated movement, more importantly, which does really, uh, really qualify it to be Swiss made, in addition to the fact that it is really very beautifully styled from a, a design perspective, I think it's a very, very impressive piece at this price range. And I think really I would challenge any other brand to be able to provide a movement in this sort of uh, setup for this sort of price. And of course, one could take the argument that, for example, those NTHs, which I showed last week, offer a very different sort of value because more care has perhaps been put into the dial and the hands, where here more care has been put into the movement. Of course, either way, you're getting a very different product. The NTHs um, are, are happy to use a Miyota movement and then uh, spend the money elsewhere. Whereas in this case, Maine have taken a, a very active position to include that Swiss-made movement, and of course the price of that does affect things at this sort of price range. But I think as far as this product goes, it's a very, very interesting package, and anyone who's after a really well-made 38mm dive watch, or indeed a 42mm if you want it, um, piece with a, a slightly vintage style and design which is timeless, elegant, and in many cases will not go, um, will not go out of fashion in terms of being overly flamboyant in one particular way. And so I think for the price this watch is offered for, it's a really impeccable package, and a really interesting one if you consider going down this route. And so do tell me in the comments down below what you thought of this video, and indeed of my commentary on this particular timepiece, because I am very interested to hear what you think. And if you did enjoy the video, then do please like, share and subscribe to help the channel, and also to be able to see more content here in the future. 
So thank you very much for watching. This is Zaman the Watch Guy, out.